Hi guys, and uh, welcome. Things are popping off today. Uh, shit is crazy. The hair has been dyed, and yeah, it's a good day. It's a great day. It's a great day to be alive. Just disregard COVID, and let's talk about how good it is. And speaking of how good it is, we're going to look at a diamond level P, or I'm sorry, a ZVT, Zerg versus Terran. And we're going to be looking at IFAX perspective. This is a replay analysis. And <laughs> um, hold on, I got to go busy here. Okay. We got a replay analysis that we're going to be going into right now. Let's go ahead and hit play to wipe that chat off. Bro, you ruined my YouTube video. What the fuck? No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about Quantum, guys. He's just... He's just joking. Right, now we can pause it again. <laughs> Yo, Creepy Kai. Thank you very much for the three-month resub. Much love. <laughs> no, uh, we're, we're, we're not going to cut this back. We're going to keep going. It's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, but yeah, yo, we're gonna basically what replay analysis is guys. If you don't know what it is, is it is uh, I will look at someone's play and I will help them get better at StarCraft. I'll tell them what they're doing right. I'll help them figure out what they're doing wrong and just ba basically progress as a player. So that's that's what we do. That's what we doing. Hell yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> All right. So, again, this is diamond level. So basically, micro is going to be a little bit, a little bit of an aspect here that we will talk about. It's not going to be super focused on just macro only. Uh, and yeah, that's. So far, your build is fine. You're, I mean, you're playing a Terran. You just did you go sixteen hundred seventy nine? Just out of curiosity, I just want to see what you did. You did seventeen. Okay. I will say your uh, your drone going to your hatchery is a tiny bit late because yeah, look at this. You're actually going 18 hatch. This is late as fuck. So a little late on that. And the reason why this is relevant is because here's the thing: 17 hatch is a, is viable versus Terran because it's very rare that Terrans will block you with like an engineering bay or something like that. It happens very very infrequently. But how however, if you got proxy rexed, the later your hatchery is this scarier it is because when a hatchery is under construction as opposed to when it's completed it has armor versus not having armor hatcheries under construction do not have armor so if he had marines coming over here that were proxied he would kill your hatchery way faster like your hatchery would get beat on a lot longer your creep would be delayed your queen would be delayed your larva would be delayed it would make defending yourself against an all-in 10 times harder every second that this hatchery is delayed beyond a 17 because 17 is already like greedy as it is but every second you delay it beyond that all in defense goes down the toilet. It just becomes really a nightmare to hold shit like that. So be very careful about when you take hatcheries at your in your natural. Do not go 18 hatch. That is that is on the verge of super greed. Like that's 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 a bit much. Uh, you don't want to go that far. Um, yeah. But you know, if you don't get all in, then it's fine. It doesn't matter anymore. But if you do get all in, you'll notice. Holy shit! This is hard to hold with an 18 hatch. <clears throat> Alright. Otherwise, your build's fine. The 18 hatch is not great, but otherwise, it's fine. It's okay. Now, will speed it up a little bit. See what's going on. Your dr your larva usage is not bad. <coughs> also, I like that you uh, filled up your gas one by one by one. If you're going to play defensive, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, your third base is... I, I like how you're taking your drone and you're sending it out to dodge a reaper. That's good. You did what I said before. I like it. Uh, be careful about your gas, though. Like, don't keep mining gas the whole time. And you can see clearly that this map is a bit of a longer one. So this map is not one where you're going to rip your drones off the gas early. Whereas, like, you would just skip zergling speed. And then you would... <clears throat> like, you're not going to be able to know early enough if you can be like, I'll just skip zergling speed and take my third. Like, it's it's late enough that you're going to scout his natural that you should just, on, on a map like this where it's longer... You should, if you hit 100 gas, you should just always take two drones off gas and just start speed and then take your third because you don't know if he is or is not taking an early natural. And if this guy, for instance, was going like three racks Reaper and you delay your gas, I know you haven't done it yet. It's like we're, we're about to see it, though. But if you were to go for a third first and delay your gas, 
against like three axe reaper, then you're fucked. Then your yeah, your build's horrible against something like that. So I'm gonna see what you do with your speed and your gas. Your gas should definitely not be mining anymore. This is excessive. It's a lot of gas. Unless you're gonna go for Overlord's speed, that is the only thing I could deem worthy here of like it's acceptable. And now you rip two off gas. So, and then your overlord didn't actually even scout. You, you scouted a Rax and no command center. This could have been Rax, 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 or Rax, 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 Rax. Something like he could have three Rax. You don't know shit right now. Like this first Reaper could hit you right now and suddenly three more Reapers come behind it. And it could become four Reaper rush. So the fact that you didn't confirm a natural here is a big mistake. You really should have. This is a poor scouting. Very poor scouting. And you also... I don't know. Did you see a marine? Why did you pull back so fast? <clears throat> you did see a marine. And he lowered the depot. He, he intimidated you. I'm going to let you know right now. If, you're, if your overlord would have flew right there, it would not have died. And here's why. See how the lights aren't flashing anymore? This is something you had to notice if you really paid attention to it. This marine just popped out. It just popped out. So, this is not two marines. This is one marine. He's not making a second one yet either. It's not flashing. There's nothing, no production here. The fact that there's no production here, and the fact that also, look at this too. Placement is a big thing. This dude, I'm going to tell you right now, like, he made it, yeah, he made a Marine, sure. So, the chances of him going crazy Reaper now are maybe a little bit lower. The chances of him having a natural are a little bit higher because he has no priority here right now, right this second, with the fact, with the barracks placement, because you cannot actually put an add on right there. You could put an add on right there, but a, a barracks would have to lift off, go up by one, and land it and put it there, or it'd have to lift off, go left by two, and put it, like, right there. That's where the add-on should will probably end up with because you could then put a depot there to finish off the wall. But and it would not be a really horrible looking wall like it would be if you lifted it off by one and had this weird ass gap right there. But my point is, is there are a few things this could be. You have not confirmed what it is. It's you could say it, you could argue the fact that it's probably not going to be a lot of reapers because you already made a marine instead, and you don't normally do this if you go for a, like a three x reaper type of build. But at the end of the day, he's not building a second marine. This is the first marine that just popped out, and uh, your overlord could easily have scouted to the right. Even if this marine ran down the ramp and started shooting right away, you could have scouted over here to the right. You could have seen a little bit deeper into his base while you did it, and then turned and went down here, and your overlord would have lived, guaranteed with like 50 hit points left still. The overlord, if, if his marine started shooting your overlord like right there, right now, and chased you all the way back here, this is actually further away than that. Or, no, you know what? It's about, it, no, it's not really. I'm just kidding. It doesn't really matter, though. Like, your Marine's, the Marine's not going to kill you. The Overlord can travel, like, a full fucking screen and, like, not die. Essentially, almost. So, like, if, like, the Marine catches you, like, right as it starts, you can pretty much go almost a full screen length with an Overlord. It's crazy how far this thing can go because of the movement speed buff it got a long time ago. Like, old Wings of Liberty Overlords? Yeah, I'd be like, get the fuck out of there. You see a Marine? Do not get shot once. But Legacy of the Void Overlords are a bit more durable than what you're giving it credit for. <clears throat> and this lack of scouting is horrible. Like, you have no idea what he's doing. Because, let me uh, let, let me just say this. The final thing will say this. It, 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 hopefully it'll enlighten you. Not knowing that he expanded or not could be the difference of him going double gas now. You know he's not prioritizing a really fast add-on because he didn't set up the, the barracks for it. So if he does eventually prioritize an add-on, he'll it'll just be it, it'll it'll be fine, but it'll be minorly delayed because you didn't the second the marine popped out, you didn't see the barracks lift right away, and nor is it in, nor is it in the right spot. <coughs> so if he makes hellions really fast after the barracks, they might be delayed by all of like five seconds. It's not crazy, uh, but it's you know it, it could be a thing. But the big one, and if it is Hellions, whatever. It's not the end of the world. It, Hellions are manageable. But the big thing that is a big deal is if you play a greedy style now, and you there is no natural here, you would have just died to an all-in. If this guy rushes, like, really fast battlecruisers or some shit, or really fast, like, 
uh, Marauder Hellbat all in or whatever. I don't know. Like some type of build that's going to be hyper aggressive with gas. Then you're going to die if you don't do anything defensive here. If it was not an expansion. However, if you did see an expansion, you could play standard because he's playing standard. All you had to do is just see a little bit further. And is there expansion here? Yes, there is. You don't know that, though. Like, you don't know. So that's a big deal. You'll die to people who do all-ins if you play this way. And you play, like, no information styles. Okay. Your larva. Let's look at your larva. You're spending your larva decently right now. You take your third. You have a fuckload of gas because you didn't take your drone. Like, you're not getting Overlord Speed either right now, so I feel like that was just a mistake. That was just a mistake to take that much gas that fast. Also, your Roach Warren is a little bit early, I would say. This is a very, very early. Like, here's the thing I would ask you a question as to why is your Roach Warren so early? Like, what make, What sense does this make? I think a Roach Warren this early would make sense if you kept mining gas and you were going to go all in. It also would make sense if you scouted no natural to defend it all in. And then you would, you know, if you were, if you stop mining gas, but then you put drones back on gas as you go, oh shit, he's not expanding. Let's start mining gas again and go a little bit lighter on the greed and go a little bit more safe. It would make sense then too. But how fast this Roach Warren is right now makes no sense. If you knew your opponent was doing what he is doing, which is playing standard. Like, this is going to be the earliest roaches ever. You're making a roach warren when your speedlings aren't even, like, near completion here. Like, this is so fucking early. And your larva gets stacked up here really hard. And this is a big problem. You're not prioritizing your larva. And your build is already falling apart. Because both hatcheries are larva capped now. Well, actually, one is, one is not. This only one has, it only has two. But still, this is a lot of larvae to just sit there. And it goes up. And it goes up. And I know you're supply blocked. But this could have been the cost of an overlord. And it could have made it a lot earlier. Like, just being, saying, I'm going to make a roach one because I'm supply blocked is not a justification. That's just shitty macro. Uh, so my biggest concern to you then would be, why are you not making overlords when a reaper's in your base? And let's go back and look at the reaper micro really fast. Because I know that's why that's happened to you. It's because of the Reaper. Let's watch how you do with the Reaper really fast and see how you do it. So you have the Reaper in your base. You're attacking him. What are you producing during this? You're 5SDing a little bit. Your larva is not bad right now. Or not actually, you, you actually are not. I'm just kidding. You made those before the Reaper. You had three drones all at once pop out, and then you have three larvae now sitting there. You were not doing anything besides staring at the fight of the Reaper. And the fact that the Reaper gets off creep. Don't Think about this, okay? Think about this. This is what you should do. In Diamond League specifically. You should not actually try to micro against the Reaper until you're like master's minimum. Like really micro against it. We're talking like pull your lings one by one and like try to like overpower the Reaper and kill it. Don't even try to kill the Reaper. Literally don't give a shit about the Reaper. All you should do against the Reaper is wait on your creep and push him off your creep. The fact that you do this cancels out having the micro against reaper in the first place because you don't like the fact that you don't also have an expansion like why the fuck are you going for a roach one before you expand as well i don't know actually i don't think you do i think you do take a third but like you should be taking a third while dealing with this not dealing with this and pulling lings back one by one by one like this reaper means nothing okay i feel like i'm, I'm kind of like tangenting a little bit I'll, I'll tell you what you should do here i feel like you were all over the place but this is what you should do reaper shows up you wait on creep. You wait on creep. He approaches creep. You attack him. He runs off creep. You you right click your lings back to your middle line. If he runs this way off the cliff, you run back to the middle line. If he runs this way to your natural, you can chase him to the other middle line. The second he leaves your base though like this and he leaves the edge of creep, turn around. Turn around. Because you, you know what's going to happen? You're going to push him away one, just one time. Just once. One time. And now your queens are out. And now your queens can do that for you every time. Your queens can now push him away every time. But the fact that you're trying to like kill him off creep is a massive mistake. And you're producing 
Now you just made more drones, which I'm happy about. But where's you, where are you looking? Let's see. I'm glad you made a third. That's good. I'm very happy about that. Your lings, you do eventually pull one back. Your lings ultimately did not kill the Reaper, or did they? Did you kill the Reaper? You actually did kill the Reaper. Well done. Who cares though? Uh, I don't want. I don't want to say you, you didn't do it though, because you actually did kill the Reaper. But if that Reaper did or didn't die, it doesn't matter because the queens are able to zone it now, like fucking super easy. But what does matter is your build is like. Like I feel like there was too much attention in that scenario right there, and now you're just fucked. Like, you don't fixate on the Reaper and don't even don't even think, I'm going to kill it, I'm going to kill it, I'm going to kill it, I'm going to kill it. Just think, I'm going to not supply block, I'm going to not supply block, I'm going to spin my larva. I'm not going to supply block, I'm going to spin my larva. When my queen pops, I'm going to start another one. I'm not going to waste time on not making a queen, which you've already wasted over probably like 18 seconds at this point. Let's see. Your queen finishes at 244. Now let's just times eight it really fast and see when you make another one. You make another one at 322. It's like 40 seconds. That's a fuckload of time of not making a queen. Your hatchery just sat there for so long. Your priorities should be your build, not what he's doing. The only time your priority should be what he's doing is if he's all in. Because you have to react or you die. And you don't know if he is or not because you didn't give yourself that information. So that's a big, again, that goes back to the core problem of what we talked about your scouting. You really need to confirm a natural. You should never assume it's there. You need to confirm that shit because you will die to people who all in you if you don't confirm that shit. Uh, but there's no reason to have your build this fucked up already. It's All it has happened to you so far is a reaper has poked you. That's it. A reaper has poked you. And so now your build is just completely fucked. Your queen is super late. Your third is later than it should have been. Because you were dealing with the Reaper. And you got, you waited until like 500 minerals to take your third. And then you may have a really early Roach Warren. Super early Roach Warren. These are three massive problems that just fucked your whole build up. And I would honestly, if I had to give you a timer here. If we're going to talk about six up to six minutes. Just up to six minutes. Like the, the mark you could hit getting there if you're playing efficient. I would say now you're probably like 30 seconds behind already. Like maybe 25, 30 seconds behind. So now what you could have been at by six minutes... Now you're going to be there by, uh, like, 6.25, 6.30, something like that. I have, like, some, like, scratchy shit on my leg right now. What the fuck? It's like a thorn in my fucking pants. Sorry. I know that was really distracting. It was scratching the fuck out of my leg. I just had to grab it. Uh... Okay, uh, yeah, so your build is just behind because of those reasons we just talked about. It's uh, it's definitely not running as smooth as it should be, and this is a massive supply block, and now you're making, you know, all your larvae at once after the supply block has been opened. Just really, really, really make it a, your priority, your macro cycles, not micro. This is why I this is why I honestly never tell people below diamond to micro and even when you are in diamond as soon as like I've said this so many times before as soon as a little bit of harass happens a diamond player just falls apart and this will always happen to you if you don't know how to micro and the way you, you micro is you have you, you have to like know what is important killing the reaper here is not important because a good Terran will never let it happen ever you should never expect that to happen like, yeah, you might be able to get fancy and do it every once in a while. But what the priority is right now is not letting your drones die. So all you want to do is shove them off your creep. Shove them off your creep. And you have to only do it for all of, like, 10 seconds. Because your queens are already in production as well. So after you shove the Reaper away one time, suddenly queens pop out. And now it's, no, it's like, irrelevant. Reaper just gets pushed away by queens now. Because Reaper is very, very uh, vulnerable. It will die super easy. So it's, it's not a factor now. It's just easy peasy kill. Like, like, you can zone it easy. And now you're making lings and roaches. Uh, and you're doing this off of no information. This is the first time you've seen what he's doing. You, I would say this. Okay. Your, build, your build is out of order, dude. 
uh, again. Oh, I know we talked about this before. Yeah. Um, but let me uh, tell you again uh, what we're the the focus here for you is. Yeah, you know, Scrappy Moo, thank you very much for the three month three sub, dude. Welcome back. Thank you, man. Woo! Thank you. Okay, you ready? IFAC? You ready, dude? Listen. Here it is. Ideally, uh, so the core concept that, I've tell, that I tell everybody, which is very true for Zerg, is larva is your priority. And you didn't make it your priority, and your build was out of order. It was all, like, you just stalled your larva out a couple times to do other shit. Ideally, you want to take the Rochorin, if you're going to make a Rochorin as an opener tech structure, when your natural is like 12 plus drones on it. This could be 12, it could be 14, it could be 15, it could be 13, it could be 16. You don't want to take it super late though, like when your third base also has 12 drones and now your natural is fully saturated and you're like, now I'll start a Roach Warren two minutes late. Obviously that's a bit, that's the way too late. But your Roach Warren needs to be started when you are basically spinning your inject. And this could be based off a fact of like how many lings you make. Some people like to make six, some people like to make four. Some people like to make two. Some people lose their lings by doing shit like chasing a reaper and need to make more. Stuff like that. Like, people do shit that's weird. Some people might have accidentally made three overlords when they could have only made one or two. These are things that are relevant as to why, why this number is not a, a fixated number. It does not have to be perfect. It just needs to be understanding the concept, which is spend your larva. 12 plus drones. Your roach warren. That will, that, that will put you at a pace where you will have spent your inject. Like your inject will be getting spent and you are taking a roach warren. Uh, and then you can afford it too. Like it's not going to stall out your larva. Because uh, you're spending it first and then you make a roach warren after. <coughs> and then uh, you should not be making roaches either when you're blind. You made a bunch of roaches blind. You just saw the fusion core. Like look at this. So your speed is almost done. I've told people in the past, and this is, again, you're doing a three-base speedling expand. You're not doing a two-base roach build. You're doing a three-base speedling expand. When your speed is almost, like you make reaper lings, which is like the four lings early. That's fine. Could be two, four, six. I think four is a good number. It's solid. It's not too many. It's not too little. Two is on the little side. Uh, six is on the, a bit of the high side. I think four is perfect. You make your four lings for the reaper. Then you make an extra like 10 when your speed's about to finish. Your speed's about to finish. You should have like 10 lings in production. You have two. And you should be making queens. You only have three queens by four minutes. Uh, like you're, this is again, your four minutes is a little bit of a late third. <coughs> I'm glad you're starting a queen there now though. It makes me happy. You're making more lings. A little bit more lings. That makes me a little bit more happy. But now you see this. And your reaction to this is making roaches. This is incorrect. Let me tell you why. You don't know what he's doing. Other than he opened up with Hellions now. You do not need roaches to deal with this. You know what you need to deal with this? With the Speedling 3 base expand? Queens. Queens deal with this. The concept with early, as early in the game as it is right now. And you're making more lings too. You have, you have, you have enough lings now. Like, how many lings do you have? Or just kidding. Those were not new lings. I'm just kidding. These should be lings instead. Uh, so you have seven lings. If you had like six more in production, which would have would said the same thing as three roaches, that would have been perfect. If you would have made three more larva of zerglings on top of what you already have, I would be like, perfect, man. That is great. And you know why that's great? It's because your your overlords should be spaced. I've told you this before too. And if I, ha if I have it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to stop saying I told you this before. I'm just going to say this is how it is. So it doesn't sound condescending. Because I don't mean it that way, but it sounds that way. I'm not trying to make it sound like that, though. Um, but it... Like, Overlord here. Overlord here. Overlord here. Like, whatever. It's just entrances to your base. You can see where the Hellions go before he approaches your creep. So you know where to put your queens, because queens are not the fastest unit in the game. But they can definitely get point to point. If you're, if you're going to go from here to here, and here you're going to see him go from here all the way around the side and then back up the ramp over here, you can easily go from there. You know what I mean? Like, it's not very hard. And your overlords tell you this. So, 
Having overlords and zerglings is uh, overlords, zerglings, and queens is all you need to deal with an initial hellion harass that you just saw a second ago. Because all you do is you put your queens in the front to where if he approaches your base, he gets smacked by queens. And if he goes, oh shit, queens are there, back up. You do free damage, you zone him out, good shit. You have good larva efficiency here. However, if he dives past your queens, he's going to take a lot of damage because he dives past your queens. And that is when you use your zerglings. He dives past queens, and then your lings activate, and you go, okay, lings, go attack the hellions. You could try to zone him, or you could just literally A-move his ass. A-moving his ass is maybe a little risky, but zoning him is a little bit better. Because uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Me, as a Zerg player, I will never fucking A-move the hellions. I will always zone them, because I can micro well with those. But the concept is, you do not let your lings engage the hellions until he dives into your queens and tries to pass them. Then you can use your lings to help the queens kill the hellions. Hellions are very very vulnerable. They're very fragile. They will die super fast on creep. Your lings will be always jumping on them super quickly. Like, lings get kited off creep like crazy because they're not faster than hellions by... They're only faster by hellions. Okay, I'm saying this. I need to check this drink of water. Holy shit, my mouth is so dry. Whew. Let me say this in a second. Off of creep, lings are only slightly faster than hellions. So it's hard to get surface area on them and smack the Hellions. It's easy for Hellions to kite Lings. On creep is a totally different story. Lings are fucking way faster than Hellions on creep. They have like Nos up their ass. And they just dive on Hellions repeatedly super fast. And Hellions now suddenly die a lot faster because you can easily surround them and kill them way quicker. And get tons of surface area. So the concept is don't let your Lings initially, initially engage the Hellions and then get kited off creep. Let queens be the ones who engage it. The fact that you're making roaches right now, and you're going to make a lot more as well. You make a ton more. This makes no sense this early because this is insanely expensive to make these roaches. It's going to severely delay your tech because they're expensive as fuck on gas this early. And the only, the only thing that would make sense to make roaches against is an all-in right now. This is way too early. Your layer should be made, like, before you make roaches here. If it's standard macro play. It's delaying all of your tech. And it's delaying... It's it's making you have to make overlords faster because they're very supply heavy. It makes you have to put drones on your gas. Uh, like, this is actually an appropriate time to put drones on your gas. But again, it's just going to use up your gas, like I said before. It, it fucks your tech up hardcore. It really does. Uh, and it, uh... The fact that you're, you're like it's more larva expensive than lings in the sense that it's gonna soak up your minerals faster as well. It's gonna make you have to then soak up your larva faster because you're making roaches that you don't need yet. Then you're gonna have to make overlords faster, which is gonna soak up your larva faster again because you don't want a supply block. It just fucks your whole build up really hard because you don't need them right now. This is like it's like basically you're having like three lines of defense for hellions when you really only need like one. Like, the queens alone are going to do the job. I'm not going to lie. Nine times out of ten, the queens are going to get the job done. But you're making queens, lings, and roaches. So you have the queens to get the job done, and then you have lings to get the job done, and you have roaches to get the job done. This is too much shit here. I will... But now we're going to progress in a second here, and we're going to say this. Right now. I agree with the fact that you're going to make roaches eventually now. Roaches now make a lot of sense eventually and when is eventually what does that mean vibe what, what do you mean by eventually what i mean is you should take your roaches when your third base <coughs> has like half saturation on it or when the game clock is like maybe like 4 45 to 5 minutes that is when you should build roaches and how many should you build probably like six seven or or eight of them somewhere in that range and why does this make sense why, why do you say that why, why how do you get to this deduction why does that make sense i don't understand what is this building right here it's a fusion core and what does this oh, mean yeah. Yo, joy thank you very much for the 21 month resub dude much love hell yeah bro make the roach thank you dude thank you thank you thank you my man the fusion core means he's going to go battle cruisers like, it's, yes, there are things he could do that are not that. Like, he could go for Liberator Range or some weird shit. Yeah, that could happen. But, uh, 
it's going to, you know, what common sense dictates this is going to be battle cruisers. No one opens a fusion core right off the bat unless they're going to go BCs. That's just how it goes because it's the most effective option Terran has with a fusion core. So he's going to go BCs. And what is a BC? And he's already shown you Hellions. So what does that mean? He's going to keep making Hellions because you're not going to go BC with Stimpak or something like that. Like you're going to do a BC harass with Hellion harass. It is the, again, it is. Some people, sometimes people do crazy shit and they go out of meta, but BC Hellion is the most effective form of Terran Harass they can do if they open Quick Fusion Core. So it, it makes sense to make Roaches when you need them, when you're going to have to deal with a combination of BC and Hellion. And why do Roaches make sense there? Because Queens don't get to defend anymore. Queens are now out of the equation because Queens have to go deal with BC. And BC hits you at like 5.30. 545 six minutes way later so if you start roaches at like 445 to five minutes you're gonna have them and you're gonna have them and you know you're not only gonna be able to build them but you're, you're gonna also be able to organize them into a position that is going to like with enough time to be comfortable here to be able to deal with a hybrid like a guy who teleports a bc into your base really fast and does like a six or eight hillion run by in your third base or something you could deal with that if you made roaches at like five minutes this is way too fucking early on roaches because all you're dealing with right now is hellions. That's it. This is like a panic response. It's like basically someone saying, uh, there's a spider on the wall. What do I need to kill that? I could get a tissue. You're like, no, get the fucking flamethrower. Get the flamethrower, dude. We can't deal with it. But a flamethrower might be a good, a good idea versus a, a spider infestation where it's like, you know, hundreds of spiders all over the place. Then yeah, tissue's not really going to do the job anymore. You know what I mean? Like it's it's you're 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 overcommitting to the small problem you have right now, and I want you to understand that concept as to why roaches make sense. Roaches make sense because queens no longer get to help anymore when a battle cruiser is implemented, and that doesn't happen until five thirty or so. So, way too early. You're overreacting. And this is fucking your economy up again. Your economy's been fucked up by your build already from how you fucked up with the Reaper. And now you're again slowing yourself down by basically squishing the shit out of four Hellions with like god tier Zerg defense here. That does not need to be needed yet. And then you chase off creep again. Don't ever do that. L literally don't use your lings unless he dives for drones. Like if he's diving, if he's like running around the edge of your creep over here, running around the edge of your creep over here, don't even engage with lings. Only use your lings if he just drives past your queens and roaches and goes for drones. And he's like YOLO as fuck. Because then you can catch him before he catches your drones. But if you chase him with the lings like this every time, the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to lose your lings. Every single time. Don't ever do that. <laughs> All right. Your spore timings are good. I like them. They're fine. But like, you see what I mean? Like, look at your roaches. You, you've made them so early, and now what are you doing? You're droning. Imagine if you didn't do this in the wrong order. You would have way more drones than you do right now. Again, 66, 66, six minute quota is the timing I like to give people for a standard build for Zerg. This is a standard build you're doing right now. This is, this is, this is not, also your gas is, uh, your third gas, way too fast. Uh, and your second gas, way too fast. You should be at like half saturated middle line before you take these. You're not doing a tech build. You're doing a speedling expand build. This is another thing that's slowing you down. Way out of order. And now look, if you made roaches at five minutes, a roach has a 17 second build time. Or sorry, it's, it's, that's a zergling. A roach has a 19 second build time. If you made them at five minutes, you would have had these roaches by like 520 realistically. Like given, you know, giving the fact that you make all the larva, all, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. And maybe, maybe you have all of them at 525 because all the larva wasn't there right away. And you made, needed to make a couple more a little bit later. The point is, you're getting hit by Hellions at 545. We quoted this earlier. And at BC is now going to be on the map. Oh shit, I didn't mean to hit back. Uh, a BC, we'll, we'll go back to that point. A BC is also going to be on the map. We're at 552 now, whatever. 
this is now when your queens like this is when you need the roaches finally you need them you've had these roaches for like a minute and a half already and now there could be a bc somewhere on this map he could teleport into your base with it see this shit six minutes the 545 to six minutes is when you actually have a threat that could happen to you you have to you really have to understand this if you don't understand this doing things like you did might feel like that makes sense but when you really understand what is actually capable out of your opponent you realize that you overreacted like fucking crazy and all you did was essentially you indirectly allowed the hellion player here to kill your whole middle line at your third base it's the same fucking thing you just didn't make it like you're not mining here and you have the same drone count as the terran it's i'm not even kidding dude it's the same thing as if you made the drones efficiently and then you went oh fuck whoops I didn't realize he just killed eight drones at my third. Oh, that sucks. It's like the exact same thing with how inefficient your build has been. It is the exact same thing because you are you don't have it and you have a tight economy and it you know this is not a good position for Zerg. This is you're actually behind right now, like you're behind by quite a bit. Your tech sucks, which it's supposed to suck because you're going for economy, but you're not going for economy. So that's a huge problem. And now look at the queens. This is this is correct what you're doing. Never have the roaches go with the queens. I'm glad you did not do that. I'm glad your roaches are preparing oh, to guard your your yeah. natural while your queens deal with the third. <coughs> that's that's important. Yo, play cake. Thank you for the uh, they play cake six six six. Thank you for the ten month resub. Bye bye. Left for Hearthstone for a while, but it feels good to be back with the boys. Yo, welcome back, dude. Welcome back to StarCraft. Thank you very much for the sub. Hell yeah. Yeah, your roaches... The whole goal of your roaches right now is obviously to defend the Hellions while your queens can no longer do it because they have to deal with the BC. Creep spread could be better. Like, look at your creep spread up here. It's barely moved all game. This is... And here too. Like, this is fucking awful. It's like spread like twice from the hatchery. And it hasn't moved since. Definitely need to improve that. Because... Again, now the the shittier your creep spread is, the more blind you are to Hellions. If your creep was like this as a net, if it was like this right now, which it totally could be, so much more vision to be like, there they are, there the Hellions are, there the Hellions are, and you know what that you know what's also really good, if you have good creep spread, and you encourage the Terran player to scan it, that is a win win for you if you have a high queen style. Because what you can do then is you can replace the creep as it dies so it doesn't recede. You just replant it as he kills it. It stunts the creep by all of like 15 seconds and you waste his mules. The more you make him not use mules and use scans instead, you slow his build down. That's essentially the same thing as like two banelings just blew up like three SCVs or something like that. Like you, you slow him. Like obviously it's not like you just kill the CVs. But the point I'm trying to make here is he loses economy. He loses time that he would have made money with. Which is, which is similar to, like, losing workers. It's the same kind of concept I'm telling you how you fucked your build up and you didn't build drones. It's just like losing drones. Because you don't get that time back. You, your, your build paces at a slower pace now. So, if you make a scan happen and you, you prevent a mule from happening, you fuck over his economy and it slows the pacing of his build every single time. So, good creep spread incentivizes scans, because Terran freaks out about that, as he should... And because if he doesn't freak out about it at all, and he just lets creep get to his fucking third base by like 10 minutes or 12 minutes. That's awful for Terran. He's like, well, I'm fucking contained now by creep and this sucks. Yeah, creep explodes. It gets ridiculous pretty fast. As long as you maintain it. But yeah, like you're missing that, that kind of aspect of your play too. Because again, this is a high queen style. One of the pros of a high queen style is good creep spread. And you're not really giving yourself that. You're barely doing creep at all. Your creep spread definitely needs improvement. And now that you have roaches, here's a great way to do this, okay? You have roaches. You reverse hellions and BCs. Maybe send like one or two of your queens out of your creep, out of your, all of your roaming creep queens out to spread like one or two tumors at a time. Use your existing tumors as well to spread them and send like maybe four roaches to the front of this choke point. Maybe send four roaches over here and leave the rest of your queens like over here. Like, you have plenty of units to cover entrances to your base to zone out Hellions. And then if you see the Hellions and you know they're going to drive to one angle to your base, rotate the Roaches and go to wherever they go. 
And then if the Hellions disappear, spread your shit out again to, to entrances of your base. And as soon as they appear, converge into where he's going. The more creep you have, the easier you have, the more time you have to react to things like this, the easier it becomes. Because you can be like, instead of seeing the Hellions right there, like the edge of your ramp, which they can just derive directly into your fucking mineral line, you can see them right there. And now suddenly you have all this time while, you drive, while he drives down to go and react to that. Your creep is definitely under par. Like your creep is on your creep is like gold level right now in this particular game, and I feel like it's the reason why I might say that is because you're freaking out the battle cruiser. All you have to do to freak to deal with battle cruiser is pull your fucking boys, pull your drones away from the middle line that he's at. If you don't have queens at it already, just pull away for a second. Be like right, like green box, right click, right there. Queens, a move towards the BC. BC flies over a spore crawler a few times, gets hit a few times. Queens eventually reinforce. It doesn't take very long. They'll get there eventually. It's not going to take like five minutes. It'll take maybe like all of 15 seconds if they're on the complete other side of your base. As long as you have creep connected. Creep is a problem here. Uh, this is now going to increase uh, uh, travel time between natural and third by like five seconds per queen. Because they're going to be like fast, 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 fast. Slow as fuck. Slow as fuck. Traffic jam on the ramp as well while, while being slow. And we're fast again. Definitely need to con connect your bases. This is huge. Uh, especially versus somebody who harasses you with air. So that that's a big deal. You're, again, that's more incentive or more reason why your creep needs to be improved. Uh, you have the queens to do it. There's no reason why there shouldn't be just one tumor here. Uh, and then, yeah, like you can deal with BCs easy. And the second you get your queens to shove the BC away, go back to mining. You lose mining time for all of maybe 15 seconds at the longest. If it's a quick one where the BC just pulls back oh, because your spore's yeah. there, you go right back to mining easy you just you're not really reacting at all uh like you're freaking out about it and we're gonna go back one more time we kind of skipped it let's go back to six minutes exactly 66 drones at six minutes if you could manage the macro well and not freak out about stuff and you're at 45 you're really 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 far behind uh shepherd thank you very much man for the five month resub vibe thank you for the quality streams in your bgm series I'm so close to Diamond now, I can taste it. Yo, yeah, I can believe in you, dude. You can do it. Get it. Thank you, man. Hey, your you're, 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 you're pacing is fucking slow as hell. Overreactions and super slow pacing of your build. That's going to literally be what the, the video title is going to be for this. Overreactions and slow pacing. How to fix that. Uh, and it's just understanding what your opponent's capable of and understanding what the requirement is out of you. And to deal with a BC, all you got to do, again, he shows up, you green box your drones, you run to the opposite side of the BC where your spore is. If he, if he teleports here and goes north, you obviously don't run into it. You run on the other side of the spore, so you would go this way. If he comes here, you go, you pull your drones and go this way. You just go opposite. You make, you make him have to fly through a spore crawler to get to your drones. A BC does not fly as fast as a drone runs away. A drone runs faster than a BC moves. You can, you can run away from it. <clears throat> as you run away from it, you pull your queens on a control group, ideally, and you go, queens, go attack the BC. Go attack in the area. The second your queens get there, drones, go back and mine minerals. And now you're mining. And then you could, do, literally, to deal with someone who goes BC Hellion, you could do something as simple as make a round of Corruptor, maybe like 10 Corruptor or something, and then just make mass roaches. Get roach speed, get a spire, go for like 10 Corruptor, go 100% roaches. <clears throat> and if you have an army that is literally maxed out on roaches with like 10 to 12 corruptor or ten, just 10 corruptor, you can deal with one or two BCs, which is what he has, which is what he will have because he's not going crazy on uh, starports as you confirmed or you actually did. I thought you had an overseer scout his base. Uh, having an overseer scout his base is nice too because you can see what his follow up is. If it's a mass starport, going mass corruptor is nice. If it's factory follow up like this. Going like for like 10 to 12 Corruptor is perfect. And then just go Mass Roaches. And you can even add in some Ravagers if you want to. Like 5 or 6 Ravagers, 10 Corruptor, Mass Roach. You would crush the shit out of someone like this if you just macroed. You're not... This is not macro. This is late as fuck. This is super delayed. Everything is so late for you. Because you're... You're... You're, fa you're like waiting way too long to do everything. And again, the reason why I think you're waiting so long to do everything is not because you don't have the APM to do it. I'm not going to lie, guys. You could do everything I'm telling you to do with like 80 APM or 100 APM. You really could. But the reason why I think you're waiting so long to do it is because you don't know what to do. 
So you're like, shit, okay, uh, 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 it has this, like, unsure, unsafe feeling. Look at the larvae you have right now. That is fucking unacceptable. Like, to a massive degree. The only way you could get this much fucking larva is if you missed multiple fucking waves of inject rounds on your hatchery. Like, in terms of, like, spending it. Like, you generated it. I'm glad you generated it. That's great. But you, like, the fact that you have this much larva sitting there... Fact, you have fucking nine larvae sitting on your hatchery. This is this means there has been guaranteed two fucking rounds of injects that have popped off after you were already fucking larva capped. And you haven't spent any larva since then. So let's just say in a perfect world that I caught this right now when this happened. That would guarantee mean 60 seconds has gone by that you have not generated larva, which is six larva. That is now six larva for this hatchery alone that has not generated. Just that hatchery. And you're at 20 fucking three for all your hatcheries. This is insane how much larva you're missing because you're not spending your larvas. So you're not generating larva. That's crazy. I'm going to pause it one more time, but I'm just going to I'm going to reiterate one thing just to make sure you understand this. <coughs> you can get to 66 drones off of like your initial seven queens. Or so, eight, seven or eight queens, which is three injecting and like four or five roaming to, to spread creep, which is what your opener was. This is what it should be because you went for a speed league expand to a third base really fast. So like seven or eight queens, that's enough to deal with BCs. And like eight roaches, that's enough to deal with Hellions. And you should go to 66 drones out of that. There's no reason why you can't. Like he's full on harassing you. He's not trying to all in you and kill you. And you can confirm that if you just see... Oh, he expanded. So, that's it. That Literally, that's it. The fact that you are not spending your larva... Like, you, you're starting to spend it now. But... Like, for instance, bailing nest? What the fuck is the point of the bailing nest? No reason to make a bailing nest. Infestation pit? I don't mind it, but a little early. But I don't mind it. I would much rather see a spire. Like, what, what's the point of going for infestation pit? Are you going to go for swarmost? Are you going to go for Infestors? The other one of those is the greatest early game against species. Because it takes forever for Infestors to, be, to become useful against species. Because you have to get Burrow. You have to get Pathogen Glands. And you have to get fucking Neural Parasite. At the very least, you just have to get Neural Parasite. These are things... And you have to wait for the energy of the Infestor to go up. The Infestor is not going to be useful for a fucking long time against a BC. After you make it. If, you, if that was the point of this building. It's really not. And he's harassing you with BCs. So that's way too early on the infestation pit. And if you're going to go hive with it, what the fuck is the point of hive? No reason to go hive here either at this point in time. There's nothing, nothing about hive that's going to make sense here. Hydralis Den. Hydralis Den, I'm not going to say it's the worst. But if you're not going to make a Spire, I understand a Hydra Den instead then. Because you're going to make Hydras instead to deal with BCs instead of Corruptor. I do think Corruptor are better. But Hydra Den makes a little bit more... It still makes sense if you want to make Hydras to deal with BCs. It's okay. But again, Bailing Nest pointless. You should not be making any lings here. You should not be making any banelings here. Fucking irrelevant building here. Uh, and then, yeah. These upgrades all are fine. You're getting... The fact that you're getting plus one missile weapons uh, upgrades your roaches and your hydras, which is totally fine. The fact that you're going for roach speed, this is mandatory. This is super important. I'm glad you're getting that upgrade. Hydra range obviously means you're going to go hydras, so it's okay. But, yeah, like... Again, delayed as fuck. You're starting these upgrades and starting these things at like eight minutes, dude. These things should have been started at like five or like right around six minutes. Like right as you hit full saturation of your third, all these things happen. Because again, drones are your priority then. But like right as you hit three base saturation, you could have done this shit like two minutes ago. And you're making swarm most. No. This is what I'm talking about. Like, Swarm must have zero purpose in this game right now. They make no sense. Swarmost are good at fighting against mech. They are. I told you this before. <clears throat> I know we talked about this before. Because uh, you asked me this question. You're like talking about Swarmost. Swarmost are good against mech. But they are not good against harassment. And that's the phase of the game you're in right now. Or you were in, at least. Like, this game is getting really late. 
But you have, like, let's just say you move across the map. How the fuck are you going to deal with BCs? Like, it doesn't make, like, you're just going to lose your Swarmost. So the only option is maybe Nidus your Swarmost across the map. But how are you going to deal with him if he kills your Nidus? How are you going to stop him if he just, like, has something to kill your Nidus with? Like, these Swarmost are, like, the worst idea to make at the first part here. Because you don't know exactly i'm glad you okay you did scout more factories and this one actually missed that again so no jesus i'm missing all your scouting i think you just did it <coughs> whatever um at least i'll say this that makes me a little bit happier I'm, I'm gonna give you a little bit more credit now that makes me happier that you made Stormost as a reaction to that because now you know if he does have bcs it's not going to be a ton of bcs if you would have made Stormost and not seen his base and suddenly you're like oh he's got six bcs ah shit that's bad. He went, like, triple starport fucking BCs. That makes me happier that you at least saw that. Like, the factories. But even then, even then, even with seeing the factories, you got harassed by BC Hellion. If you were going to go for Swarmhost as your initial unit choice, I completely disagree with going for everything. You're not being... You are not... The problem you're having here... Is you are not being assertive in any way. You have zero assertiveness in your build. You're going for a Hydralis Den. You're going for upgrades. Why the fuck would you not, just not like prioritize a Hydra timing with that? It would, be, it would make sense in multiple ways. You're dealing with BCs. And you're also dealing with... Uh, you, you know, you're going into a pressure form here. And if your opponent goes for any type of greed, you will punish him for that. If your Hydras don't punish him because he's not being greedy enough and you lose some of your army, you can... And then now he's becoming a Turtle Terran. He's playing safe Turtle Terran. You can then go Swarm Host and break him then, which is when it makes sense. Rushing Swarm Host versus someone who's greedy, if that's what he was doing, doesn't do shit for you. It doesn't do anything. Because you're going to not be able to punish him for being greedy because you have these long fucking cooldowns to wait on on your Swarm Host. And on top of that, it takes longer to get there. Like, getting to a high Swarmost count takes a lot longer than going just Roach Hydra. So you're going to give him more time to benefit from his greed. Swarmost makes sense when they are turtling. Turtle, 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 turtle. It doesn't make sense against a Terran who harasses you with Hellion, Cyclo or Hellion uh, BC. And then expands behind it. Sarmos doesn't make any fucking sense here. And you have no idea how many bases he's on. You should just, you, honestly, you should have just gone Roach Hydra here. And th I don't, again, I wouldn't mind it if you, like, let's say you got 180 supply. 180 supply of Roach Hydra. And then you make an infestation pit. And then you go, oh fuck, I'm not going to kill him because he's got tanks everywhere. He has fucking tank, 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 tank. He's got like 15 tanks and like two sensor towers. And then roaming like Thors and Hellions. I'd be like, okay, yeah, this dude is now becoming turtly as fuck. And you might have like been able... To, you, you could guarantee that he you could shove him into like a three base setup at the best. Because if he's like expansion, 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 and I'm going tanks. It would be like tank, 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 tank. Like they're going to be so fucking spread out and he's going to have less of them. Because he's been greedier. So if you just prioritized Roach Hydra, you would punish the shit out of a greedy Terran follow-up. And you would make his mech style go very low economy mech style. And you know what also is really good for Swarmost? Two things about Swarmost are really good. Number one, when he's turtling. Because you can just you can easily walk across the map and kill him while he turtles. Number two, when he doesn't have any fucking money... So that when you kill shit, he has a hard time replacing it because he's going broke. He doesn't have money to replace it as much because he's literally mining out of his bases. So the longer you contain someone, the better it is with Swarmost if you actually are killing shit. This is not the case this game. So again, Swarmost is going to feel... This is one of those games where you're going to look at Swarmost and go, You know what? This unit sucks. Swarmost fucking blows. Why does it suck? Because you're not using it the right way.
Stormwolves also really needs creep spread to be good. Your creep really needs... Again, this is just more incentive to make your creep better. Stormwolves is like a sitting duck when it's in the middle of nowhere. It's such a bad unit if it's off creep. And now you make the Stormwolves, and what are you doing with them? You can you invest it into them, and you're not using them either. This is also a mistake. Stormwolves are all about continuous harassment of your opponent, not about sitting back on your base and turtling yourself. You've made these almost for a while now. And now you're going to die. Like you're dead now. Because you used Hormost to do what I think you could have done with Roach Hydra. Instead of at 11 minutes, you could have done it at 8 minutes. Ser I'm dead serious, dude. You could, have, you could have done a Roach Hydra high supply max in the 8 minute mark. Like eight to nine, somewhere in between eight to nine minutes, while still going for tech later after you max out or get close to maxing. And then if you break him and you make him turtle, then you go swarm host. Then they would own because then you could walk over there and repeatedly do attacks like that. You waited so fucking long to use swarm host, and you also used it against someone who is not turtling. He's expanding. And. You also just blew your fucking... He, he was on five bases when you went Swarmost. That's how long you waited to use them. And then you blew your load on a fucking brand new expansion that he just canceled because it was going to die. And now you're out of a cooldown and he attacks you. And now you have no way to stop this. Because you sat back on defensive Swarmhost. The only way you can deal with this now is if you periodically throw wave after wave after wave, which will take 40 seconds by 40 seconds by 40 seconds at him. And you have, to, you have to let time go between those. You will kill part of his army as it goes, but you'll lose base. 40 seconds goes by. You throw a wave, he kills this base. Your, your storm must recharge. He kills a wave, or like you might kill a couple units, but not enough again. He kills your natural. 40 seconds goes by while he does that. Suddenly he's in your main base now. Another wave, and he kills your main base. Because you, again, you don't have enough. Like you just don't have enough shit here. You, don't, you do not have enough. Soros made... I, I really hope it makes sense as to why we're saying Soros didn't make any fucking sense here. It really was not... It was not justified to go Soros. You should have just maxed out on Roach Hydra, Roach Ravager, Roach Corruptor, and just pressured his economy and then went Soros when you can contain him and you can make him turtle. This right now, the only way you would win here... The only way you would win in a situation where you have Swarm Host is if this was an all-in and he cannot replace any of this because his whole base is fucking dead. And that's what it would happen if you actually tur made him turtle and contained him and you did it long enough and then went Swarm Host and then kept pressuring him and he goes, well, I got to all-in now, otherwise I'm dead. And I have no income because I'm out of money. Like, I have to go. Yes, then Swarm Host would be I would say then if that was the situation here, then your Swarm Host would be an amazing choice. Because every unit that dies does not get replaced. But he can replace all day. Because look at his fucking economy. He's like rich as hell. He's got no no pressure. On, no worries. He doesn't give a shit. He's got money for days. So all that's going to happen now is you're just going to die. So you kill a Thor, you kill a Hellion, you kill a second Thor. You might even kill a third Thor, maybe. No, you won't. You killed two Thors and a Hellion. Two Thors and a Hellion is what you killed. And the more you kill, the more you will kill the next time because the less DP DPS he has to stop your Locust. So if this was an all-in, that would have been great. You would have slowly whittled him down more and more and more, and eventually it just overwhelms him. But look at his supply. Look at his production. This isn't stopping. It's going to keep happening because he still has a great economy. So the Swarmos choice here was horrible. For the time you took it. The whole purpose of Swarmos is, again, to be aggressive while they're turtling. You have to understand that concept. You have to understand that concept. Aggressive while they turtle. You do not... You cannot justify making a Swarmos while you turtle while they're greedy. That makes no fucking sense. Like, that doesn't add up. That, that What that adds up to is a loss. Like this. Where it's like, wow, so we're going to suck dick. They're really bad units. Ooh. 
One, two. Almost four Thors died right there. Mm. There you go. Yeah, you just... Out of order, dude. Uh, IFAC. Potential? You have potential again. Clean up your build. Focus on your build. Fix that shit. That is your biggest problem again. Uh, like, like, don't get distracted by a Reaper, for instance. Like, that, that was the first thing that fucked you over so hard. And then you, like... Taking your gas super fast to your natural. Taking your roach horn super fast to your natural. Overreacting to the aggression. Understand that you should be going for three bases really fucking fast in terms of saturation. And then you're good to go. So much better if you play that way. You're overreacting to small threats. And then you're not using your units correctly. And I hope the way we described it makes sense. So we'll start amazing as long as you can make them turtle. They are actually good units if you use them the right way. They are fucking terrible units if you use them the wrong way. And you you totally use them the wrong way this game. So. Know that. That is a thing. Uh, but yeah. I hope that helps you, man. I hope that was informative. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. And just go back through and listen to it again if you want micro tips as to like piece by piece as to how you should go about it. I did try to break down how to micro every aspect of every phase of the game that you should be trying to go for. And it's basic shit. It's not like split, surround, uh, rotate, fucking uh, don't get AOE'd, uh, you know, focus fire. Like, I don't, I just literally say position yourself correctly, and that's fucking it. Just position. It's just position. That's all you should really focus on in Diamond League, and if you can do that, you're great. That's golden. If you don't, if you understand how to position, that's the first aspect of good micro. And then you build on it from there, and that. Once you can actually do positioning, you will not be Diamond League anymore. You'll be Masters. For sure. So work on that. And, uh, yeah, man. It'll help you a lot. But thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys found it informative. This has been a Zerg versus Terran, uh, uh, mech. I kind of forgot what I was going to call the video title. I'm thinking about it, but I don't know. Whatever. I'll call it whatever. I'll figure something out. I can, I, I, there's a lot of things I could call this. But if you guys liked it, Go check out more. I have many other lessons, uh, replay analysis, stuff like that, from all types of leagues. If you guys aren't diamond, there's leagues. There's I've done leagues for everything. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, good luck. Take it easy. Peace, guys.